today is basically one announcement. Just so you know, our Lectio Divina and daily reflections to the week are at the entrances of the church, as they always are, but they're also available online. And also, distribution of palms will take place next Sunday, Palm Sunday, from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the side food pantry door. So we'll enter the parking lot and come up along the driveway between our church and the congregational church, and we'll be distributing palms right there.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit. If only the Spirit of God dwells in you, whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is alive because of righteousness. If the Spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also, through his Spirit dwelling in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Two miles away. 
And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him. But Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise. Martha said to him, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary secretly, saying, The teacher is here and is asking for you. As soon as she heard this, she rose quickly and went to him. For Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still there where Martha had met him. So, when the Jews who were with her in the house comforting her saw Mary get up quickly and go out, they followed her, presuming that she was going to go to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, the Jews who came, who had come with her weeping, he became perturbed and deeply troubled and said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Sir, come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man have done something so this man would not have died? So Jesus, perturbed again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay across it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, by now there will be a stench. He has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believe you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me, but because of the crowd here, I have said this that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, tied hand and foot with burial bands, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. So Jesus said to them, Untie him and let him go. Now, many of the Jews who had come to Mary and seen what had been done began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Stage here of life that we're not quite sure what to do with. And all of it is 
beyond our control. Do we believe this? And yet my hope and prayer is, is that we do. And quite frankly, I'm very heartened lately because I'm seeing signs of faith everywhere. Just the other day I was on the phone with someone who was checking in, and they alerted me to the fact that they were just reaching out and checking in on a neighbor, making sure they were provided for, taken care of, even though they couldn't be face to face and have contact, they were being reached out to. We had another phone call down in the rectory of somebody just saying, Father, how can we help with the food pantry in the midst of everything that's going on so people are provided for? Had even another person reach out and just say, you know, in the midst of all of this, those words from, you know, the scripture keep jumping out at me. Do not be afraid. So many signs of faith coming to the forefront in this time because so much is not in our control. And isn't that the point? That you and I, my dear friends, in the midst of this chaos and craziness, have so much control taken away from us that now we must have faith. And indeed, we're seeing faith everywhere we look. I want you to continue to lift those things up to the Lord. Those thoughts, those feelings, those desires, whether they be good or whether they be tough right now, and have a conversation with them. As you listen to those words of the gospel, you can even look them back up again after the fact. What word or phrase or sentence is jumping off the page of you? Because if it's jumping off the page right now, I, I know God is trying to speak to you in that. That's an invitation into that prayer time where he can speak to you personally. And we're all being called to have faith. And even a couple times we're going to need that little boost as we go along. Because as we listen to that story again of Lazarus being raised from the dead, Jesus has to go to Martha a second time once he gets to the tomb and says, you know, again, with everything that's going on, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? Because she's fearful. She's trepidous. She's looking at the, at the situation and saying, Lord, Lazarus has been dead for four days. There will be a stench. And our Lord reassures her once again. We need to be reassured, I think, in the midst of this continuing crisis that we're going through in the midst of our world, that we're going to be okay. That our Lord is here. That he is calling us to himself. And he's like us in all things. He's with us in those moments that we're strong, that we're able to lean on his strength and make it our own. He's there when we're making those acts of selflessness as we serve others in whatever capacity we can. He's there when we're at our weakest, when maybe the tears come. We even see here the shortest line in Scripture, and Jesus wept. He knows about every emotion, everything that can be going through our interior right now. Whatever is moving within, he's familiar with it. And he's there to comfort us and to strengthen us in this time. We are all being called to a greater and more trusting faith in this time. Indeed, if we look around our church, we remember the image of divine mercy that's over to my left side there, or, you know, as you come into the church, you always see it. Jesus, I trust in you. Well, now we're being called to trust in a new and profound way in this time where we don't have control. Going to get there. We're going to be all right because we have our Lord. We're called to lay down those things that are not of Him and to take up everything that is of Him, to allow Him to move within our hearts, to continue to be beacons of hope in the midst of this world. We can do that because of Him who loves us. Even though we are apart right now, it's the Lord that is drawing us together. He's calling us to have faith and to entrust everything we can't control to him because he can do what no one else can. He can raise us to new life. My friends, entrust it all to him. Have faith. Do not be afraid and know that your Lord and Savior is there every step.
confess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten of me, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate with the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who of the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Lifting our hearts and minds before our Lord, let us bring all of our prayers before him as we continue our Lenten journey. That the one holy Catholic and apostolic church continue to proclaim the value of human life and let us pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayer. That the nations of the world know the love and peace of Jesus who wept with his friend Lazarus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. May any mother facing an unexpected pregnancy be lovingly accompanied as she prepares to win Christ, uh, to encounter Christ anew, let us pray, the Lord, Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer, that all the sick be healed, the dying comforted, and all the frontline caregivers be protected and renewed during this trying time, let us pray, the Lord, Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. For our mission parish and Haiti, let us pray, the Lord, Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. For the members of our local public safety departments and military who protect us at home and abroad, that they be kept free from harm, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those friends and loved ones who have gone on before us, into the embrace of our Lord's arms, especially for Nancy Isernia, whom we will remember in this liturgy, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for all the intentions of our parish prayer chain, and for all those prayers you hold in your hearts that are known to God alone. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, help us to continue to entrust everything in our hearts to you, that if we are fearful, we may entrust it, that if we are hopeful, we can entrust everything to you, and that all that moves within may be lifted up, that we may find our strength to continue to move forward in the midst of our trials. And we ask all of this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our glory to him is you are mine.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We will only accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as true man, he wept for Lazarus his friend, and as eternal God, he raised him from the tomb. Just as, taking pity on the human race, he leads us by sacred mysteries to new life. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exalted praise as we acclaim. similar way when the supper was ended. He took the chalice, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance of your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God. With blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Patrick, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant, Francis our Pope, and Robin our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you, and your compassion, and merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children, scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you with their passing from this life, give kind and minutes to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, from whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes. 
takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Friends, I now invite you to join me in a prayer of spiritual communion. Repeat after me. My Jesus. My Jesus. I believe that you are present. I believe that you are present. In the most holy sacrament. In the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things. I love you above all things. And I desire to receive you into my soul. And I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment, since I cannot at this moment, receive you sacramentally, receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart, come at least spiritually into my heart, I embrace you as if you are already there, I embrace you as if you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you, and unite myself wholly to you, never permit me to be separated from you, never permit me to be separated from you, amen.
We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. I now invite you to join me in the praying of the St. Michael prayer. Together we pray, St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, o Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan, and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. God, bow your heads. Pray to God's mercy. Bless, O Lord, your people who long for the gift of your mercy, and grant that what at your prompting they desire, they may receive by your generous gift. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our celebration is ended. We are forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Have a great weekend.